This is News Fighters. Where we fight the news so you don't have to. With Dylan Behan. G'day everyone, it's Dylan Bain here from your favourite podcast, News Fighters. It's the 45th day of the 79th month of 2020, which means the US election just happened. So, the American people have spoken. But what did they have to say? Yeah, Joe Biden gave his election night speech to a crowd of honking car horns there. And I have to say, it really was the best received election night speech probably since Franklin Roosevelt in 1940. (laughs) Yes, and not to be outdone, the ABC here in Australia made sure their US election coverage also included loud car noises. That the Democrats are not doing as well as they or the pollsters expected. The and Japan, yeah, of course. That's a very loud car just yes, roaring by. I think it's doing the block. I think it's doing the block. Former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull there was the guest being hooned over. Uh, but luckily, he did have an idea how to fix this car noise problem. There, there is a job for a double glazer here. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I, well, I, if, we, if I, the I, ABC had a bigger budget I, on the rule, we would have paid well, for I it. Think, I think Mr Turnbull just made a perfect argument yeah, you for an objective public broadcaster uh, to prevent, uh, to prevent we the partisan... We couldn't afford the double glazer. Yeah. Andy Green standing... We could afford Anthony. Andy yeah. Green standing by. Yes, thank you. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because his government cut the ABC's funding. Also, I love hearing Malcolm Turnbull whinging about things he screwed over. What's he going to complain about next, the NBN? Oh, why don't we have better internet here in Australia? Burr, burr, burr. Uh, and yes, sadly, I do believe Anthony Green probably does get paid less. Uh, than a window glazer. Um, Yes, the ABC election day coverage was blessed by Malcolm Turnbull's in-depth geopolitical insider knowledge as a former world leader. Well, look, it's 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 too close to call, as everyone's saying. Oh, look, I I I couldn't give you a worthwhile view on that. But you know, we don't have a vote uh, in this election. The question is, who do you want to run this country for the next four years? Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Wow, what insight. Thanks, Malcolm. So while the ABC and the other networks were saying it was too close to call on Wednesday, Alan Jones on Sky News had other ideas. At the close of counting, it's Biden 238, Trump 213, chasing 270. Trump will win comfortably. Alan also let slip why he liked Trump's policies. The preservation of values, the willingness to step into the ring against minorities. Uh, Meanwhile, with the count still going on on Friday morning, Nine's Karl Stefanovic had had enough. Welcome to a special edition of Today America Decides 2020, or as we should rename this coverage, America's Still Deciding. Mm, And I'm not sure they're going to decide. Cute (laughs) laughter. I love the kind of the minutiae of the American election, Mm. but I'm so over it. Just decide already. No, no, I just, it's like, it's so punishing. You know, blah, 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 blah. It's for important, days. Carl. It's really important. Yeah, but but, but it's, I know it's important. I do this for a living. <laughs> but but it's just dragging on and on and on and on. And we're not going to know for days. I oh, know. I don't think anyone disagrees with you. I just want to go on holidays. Well, Carl, if you are going to go on holidays, might I suggest avoiding America at the moment? It's a little bit of a divided horror show. Uh, how about you just stay here stuck in doom scrollier like the rest of us for a little while longer? Meanwhile, over on Ben Fordham's radio show, former treasurer and political dropout Joe Hockey stopped by to offer his expert opinion on the US election. So there's a chance that electoral fraud has happened? Oh, for sure. In Washington, D.C., 93% of the city voted for Joe Biden. 93%. Even my best booth in Longueville, God bless him, when the Kidmans were handing out for the Labor Party... Even my best booth, I got 83%. Yes, Joe Hockey there struggling to understand how big government beltway establishment Democrat Joe Biden could be more popular in a city of career public servants than he was in Longueville. Now, as I record this on Saturday, Biden is uh, trending towards victory and a lot of people are probably already celebrating the impending defeat of Donald Trump. Um, But a special message um, for all you comedy fans out there worrying that the election of Joe Biden will uh, kill off political comedy due to the drought of presidential wacky clips with Trump gone. I just have to say, don't worry. Joe Biden will not let us down. He is a wacky clip human gaff machine. I am very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental 
my physical as well as my mental fitness. By the way, it's my little sister Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh no, this is a, oh, you switched on me. Tomorrow's Superstar Tuesday. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. So even though Joe Biden has definitely won the popular vote and almost certainly won the Electoral College, uh, the Democrats still didn't do as well as they'd hoped. They didn't win the Senate, and Donald Trump picked up at least an extra 7 million more votes uh, than in 2016. So right now, what the left should be asking themselves is how did such an incompetent, racist dog whistling, conspiracy theory peddling, universal healthcare hating, climate science denying, YMCA dancing lunatic, impeached president managed to pick up millions of new voters in the middle of a bungled pandemic that's killed hundreds of thousands and caused a recession, putting millions out of work. How did 7 million more people say, well, I didn't vote for Donald Trump last time, but his record as president impresses me enough to go vote for him this time? Well, part of the answer has to be with the right-wing media's morbid fascination with painting Joe Biden as being a senile yet corrupt radical socialist on death's door. To the point where even Australia's Sky News has been addicted to pushing this narrative for months. Biden is the lipstick on the crazy lefty pig. The Democrats have uh, endorsed someone that uh, does have Alzheimer's disease. He sounded like he had coronavirus. He could barely breathe. 40% of Americans believe Biden has, quote, some form of dementia. Even if we didn't have all the corruption allegations and everything else, you've got the cognitive issues. And he is compromised by these business deals should he become president. Biden's cognitive Deficiency. Biden's cognitive issues. Oh, yeah, and Biden's losing his brain. He's going centre. You know, Joe Biden, jokes aside, can't string a sentence together. Who, in his rare public events, sounds increasingly vague and confused. Wheeling him out, weakened at Bernie star. Okay, look, say what you will about the fitness to govern of Bernie from weekend at Bernie's. There's no doubt he would still have a better pandemic response plan than Donald Trump. And if you've seen the sequel, you'd know he's a better dancer. And to be honest, I'm not sure why they're saying Biden is vague and can't string a sentence together. Have they heard the incoherence from this guy? Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, 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 bing. What the bing, bing, bang, bang, bong, bing, 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 bong. COVID, 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 COVID. We're rounding the curve. We're rounding the corner. Okay, back to my original point. Why did the Democrats underperform? And why did Donald Trump gain millions of extra votes compared to last time? Well... I have a feeling the answer is probably with people like this guy, a laid-off Pennsylvania factory worker that was interviewed recently on the New York Times podcast, The Daily. I worked 20 20 years in a factory right up there. My wife worked at the same place. I mean, almost everybody and their mother worked in this factory right up the road, which is being torn down now. The old factory made CDs. Oh, it made everything. It made... Yeah, tell us about the factory. What was the company? It made the vinyl records. It made uh, the VHS movies, the Blu-rays. Um, but then the job started fizzling out, you know, they started going to Mexico and China and everything. A lot of people lost their homes over it. Okay, so the VHS tape factory jobs all went to Mexico. Okay, it, it's a, to me it sounds a little bit like saying, uh, uh, you know, I used to have a job uh, delivering newspapers until it got stolen by those damn Swedes. Of course, this would be a joke if it wasn't so tragic. Millions are losing their jobs. And it's uh, far easier for a politician like Donald Trump to win votes by saying, hey, a Mexican stole your job. And those elites who wrote the trade deals are to blame um, than it is for him to tell the truth and blame the productivity gains due to digital innovation and internet streaming technologies. But enough of my ranting. It sounds like the Trump campaign grew its vote numbers by focusing on the worries of nervous working class and unemployed people, uh, mostly by saying stuff like this. I will deliver jobs, 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 good ones too. After NAFTA's adoption more than 25 years ago, the United States lost nearly one fourth of all of its manufacturing jobs. To save our auto industry, I withdrew from the last administration's Trans-Pacific Partnership. 
Biden is the shutdown candidate. The Democrats are the shutdown party. They will shut down your jobs, shut down your schools, your businesses. Since April, just since April, just now, we created a record, never happened like this, 11.4 million brand new American jobs. That's never happened before. Yeah, right. A record number of jobs created since April. Uh, can I have a look at those March figures by any chance, Donald? No? Can't look at March? Anything Anything? Uh, anything happened in March? March I should be aware of? No? So while Trump was appealing to his base by talking about jobs on the campaign trail, uh, Joe Biden was appealing to his base by saying stuff like this. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. We have racist and they've existed and they've tried to get elected president. He's the first one that has. Hey, Joe, we all know that Trump is such a racist that he should lose his job as president over it. But if you're a Trump voter who's just lost your job, calling Trump a racist isn't going to make them vote for you. And then none of this was helped by Biden's gaffe in the second debate when he was talking about his climate change plan. Would you close down the oil industry? Way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I will that's transition. a big statement. That's it is a big statement. That's a because big statement. I would stop. Why would you do that? Because the oil industry pollutes significantly. Oh. We have that's one maybe final the biggest question. statement in terms of business. That's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically what he's saying question, is he is Mr. going President. to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President. Now, of course, it goes without saying that with the world constantly on fire at the moment, we desperately need to replace the fossil fuel industry with renewables as soon as possible. But where do all these people employed in the old industry go to work? I mean, I, I hear the VHS tape factories in Mexico aren't hiring at the moment. Now, to his credit, Joe Biden says he has a plan for people losing their jobs in dying industries. But he's not very good at selling it. Here he was on Colbert in 2017. Truck drivers I talked to are saying, well, you know, they're going to automate trucking. I know, and I'm not going to have a job. I'm 52 years old. I'm making $80,000 a year busting my neck. And so well, what's, the, what's the answer to that? The answer is we've got to talk to them and tell them there's ways to do this. And what we have to do, though, is we have to let them know there's things we, for example, we have to have continuing education. And I mean continuing education. That is when you're out of school and you've gone through high school and you've gone on a job and you end up uh, finding out you're out of work. Well, you, there are 100,000 jobs out there in high tech manufacturing that people can learn, but you need to be able to train people. So do you have to be in a position where you team up with community colleges and corporations and you teach people how to run a photovoltaic machine on the floor that makes, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, solar panels? Yes, because America will definitely need as many solar panel makers as truck drivers. Look, jobs are disappearing everywhere due to technical innovation and globalization, and nobody on the left or the right seems to have a plan. I'm a TV editor by day, and a lot of the tasks that used to be done by juniors, like syncing footage and transcribing, are now done by apps. So with all these jobs around the world disappearing, it looks like right-wing parties have successfully tapped into the fear and xenophobia of the precariously employed working class to win them elections while they've successfully used culture wars to paint the left into a corner where all they can do is shout the word racist at their opponents. So given all this, it's almost a miracle that Joe Biden looks like he's managed to win this thing, but a lot of people are saying that's only thanks to COVID, 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 COVID. And looking at how close the results are, it doesn't look like Trumpism has been defeated in the long term. And unless the Democrats and the left around the world figure out a way to successfully sell their literally life-saving and world-saving policies to working class and unemployed voters, then they may as well be saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to my Biden rant. I promise I won't talk about uh, American politics uh, for at least... A little while. That's News Fighters for today, the 326th day of the 395th month of 2020. Hey, do us a favor, write us a review or give us some stars on iTunes. We'd very much appreciate it. Keep fighting and bye for now. This is News Fighters, where we fight the news so you don't have to.